Our third example is the cylindrical coordinates example. So in this case, we're given information about theta and theta dot. And that's how we know we need to use cylindrical coordinates, because we use cylindrical coordinates when we're given information about a change in angular velocity or acceleration. So this in cylindrical coordinates, our expressions are all in terms of r, r dot, or r double dot, theta, theta dot, or theta double dot. So let's start writing out what we know about r and what we know about theta. So r is given. We have an expression for r. r is equal to 0 0.8 sine of theta. Um, we also have an expression. We know that the theta we're interested in is 60. And we have theta dot of 5. And that's a constant, so theta double dot is equal to 0. All right, so if r is 0.8 sine theta, at theta equal to 60, right, r is going to equal 0.6928. So that's just plugged in 60 into this expression. All right, r dot is the derivative then. So 0.8 is a constant. The derivative of the sine is the cosine of theta. And then the inner derivative, because theta is dependent on t as well, we get a theta dot. If we plug in theta equal to 60 and theta dot equal to 5 into this, we get 2. All right, last derivative, double dot. 0 0.8 stays out front. The first derivative. Right, so the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first is the way the, the product rule works. So the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine of theta, but theta is dependent on t, so we need a theta dot. And there was already a theta dot, so that's going to become squared. Plus the first times the derivative of the second is theta double dot, so that's zero. You plug in all the other one, other parts. This is going to equal negative 17.32 at this specific situation, the 60 with the speed, the angular speed of 5. All right. So let's take a look now at this little ball up here, right? And we're going to look at the free body diagram for this ball. So we've got tension acting down the rope. There's our tension. So the tension actually connects from the surface of this circle to a point at the far surface, the origin. The normal will point, it's the normal on the ball, so it's going to be pointing up, but it's along this line, right, the one that connects the center of the circle to its edge, the radius. So that's going to point that way. That's going to be our normal. And then we've got Fn, which is what we're trying to find. Fn is going to be perpendicular to the tension, because it's perpendicular to this. Let's make it look perpendicular to the tension. It's perpendicular to this shaft with the hole in it, which goes along the rope where the tension is. So that, then, is Fn. Oops. All right, and we also ha would have weight acting on this, except it tells us that we are in a horizontal circular path, which means gravity is acting into the slide, so we don't have to worry about weight. All right, our coordinate system goes from the origin, right? So our coordinate system is going to point out from the origin, and is going to point in the direction of theta dot. So they need to be perpendicular, but in that direction. That's perpendicular. So this is our, theta, our r direction. This is our theta direction. And we can now write our equations of motion. So fr is going to be negative t, 
right? Plus the component of N that is along that direction. So let's take this angle here between T and N and we're going to call that alpha. Just we need an angle. We'll figure out what alpha is in a second. So N, that's the adjacent cosine of alpha. And that's going to equal mass times the acceleration in R. The sum of forces in the theta direction, we've got Fn, all of which is in the theta direction. And we've got part of N, and in this case it's going to be negative that. So negative N sine of alpha, because that's the opposite part. And that's going to equal mass times A alpha, or A theta rather. All right, so two things we have to do. We need to find AR and A theta, and we need to find alpha. And we need to talk about tension. So let's start with AR and A theta. We found all our R, R dots, all of that stuff. So AR, the expression for AR is equal to R double dot minus R theta dot squared. Well, we know R double dot, so that's equal to negative 17.32 minus R, which is the 0 0.6928 times theta dot 5 squared. So that gives us negative 34.64. All right, then a theta is equal to r theta double dot plus 2r dot theta dot. Well, theta double dot is 0, so that term goes away. And we get 2 times 2 times 5 equals 20. All right, so we have the r, a r and the a theta. Now let's talk a second about alpha. If we look at the diagram here, I'm going to change my pen color so we can see it better. Let's make it red. Looking at the diagram, we have this from the center here. We go, um, if we extend this down here, right, that's part of our triangle. How is that then related to theta? Okay, well, if we also go from the center down to here, right, now we have an isosceles triangle because this is a radius, the top line is the radius, and the bottom line is a radius. So if this is the alpha up here, so is this down here, right? So if that's alpha, we know that theta plus alpha is equal to 90 degrees because this is directly at the bottom, so this is vertical and that's horizontal, that's 90 degrees. So based on that, we have that theta alpha plus theta equals 90 degrees. If al theta is 60, alpha must equal 30. So we've got alpha. Now let's talk about T. T is tension in an elastic cord. All right, so it's a spring. We're given a spring constant, in fact. So T is equal to K times the stretch in the spring. Well, we're told that the string or the rope is unstretched at 0.25. Currently, it has a length of R. So T is going to be 30, which is the K, times R minus 0.25, right? The current length minus the original length. So that's going to equal 30 times, the current length is 0.6928 minus 0.25. So now we are ready to plug things into these two equations. So let's take these two equations, take them over here. We get negative 30 times 0.6928 minus 0.25, that's T, plus N, which we don't know times cosine of 30 is equal to mass, which is 0 0.08, eight gram, 80 grams, right? And we put masses in kilograms, times AR, which is negative 34.64. All right, 
n is the only unknown there, so we get n is equal to 12.14 newtons. It's part of our answer. The other part of our answer is the other equation. So we've got fn, what we don't know, minus 12.14 times sine of 30 is equal to mass, 0.08 times a theta, which is 20. Fn is the only unknown. Plug everything in. We get Fn is equal to 7.67 newtons, which is the other part of our answer.